Hallelujah. Get your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 8, verse 11. I want to talk about the power of believing. The power of believing. Believing is a choice. And let me say first, right off, I'll give you the definition of believing. Belief or believing means to take as true. That was simple, wasn't it? <laughs> believing is simply taken as true to have confidence in a statement or promise of another person. So when you believe, you believe that what you hear is true. And so God's word is true, and so God says, believe. That's a very powerful word, belief. That's what we want to talk about this morning. And let's read this in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, because it talks about the parable of the sower. And this is, of course, Jesus explaining it to us. He says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved. I want us to read that again because I think of Proverbs where it says, Guard thy heart, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. Let's read this again. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear them. The devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. How many of you know the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy? Therefore, we have to guard our hearts with all diligence. Because if we don't, then the enemy is going to come and steal that word. Look at the word believe and be saved. Before you can be saved, you've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe in the truth of God's holy word. You've got to believe in the gospel. Look at verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptations fall away. Very powerful word. Temptations will come our way. I want to read that again because I want to embed that into us because I've met many individuals who did not guard their hearts. They believed for a while. But they did not hold fast to their belief. How many of you know the Bible says that we are to hold fast to our confession or to hold fast to our belief? What we believe is very important. Our belief system must be in the Word of God. Now notice this. The word with, they, they receive the Word with joy. And these have no root who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. I, I imagine that every one of us here knows somebody that believed for a while. And you can see the temptations come. Because there's a sifting. How many of you know there must be a sifting in our lives? Because Bible belief, when one really believes, uh, our belief will be challenged. Temptations will come and try to draw us away. Because the devil knows if he can get a person to stop believing, then you've lost your power to live. And temptations will come. I tell the young men, the women are not going nowhere. And I'll tell the young girls the same thing. The young men are not going anywhere. Temptations will come your way and they will come my way. But make sure that you don't fall away because of the temptation. And yet we see because they had, they had no root. They believed for a while. They might have believed for a year or two or three years. I've seen people even believe for five years and six years. And temptation will come. And usually when a person falls away in temptation, listen to this, they'll always fall back into what they came out of. 
if they were in drugs, if they were in the prostitution, or if they were in stealing, whatever, they always go back, okay, to where they came from. And so the temptations come to try us. You know, when I think about uh, Abraham, Abraham was tried. Can you imagine? I know these women are having their little babies. And can you imagine the Lord say, Now take your baby up on the mountain and sacrifice him unto the Lord. Hey, is that heavy stuff? That's heavy stuff. How many of you know we need to be tested? Say, we need, we need to be tested. I don't like it, <laughs> but I need it. Because, see, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, listen to this, it's going to prove if we really have any root system in the Lord Jesus Christ or in his word. That's why the Bible says that we're to be grounded and rooted in his word and in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the temptations will come. I know the fathers and mothers we, uh, we have here, they, they, you know, they're going to try to save their kids from all the temptations. Listen, they're going to have to face every temptation that comes their way. And that's going to be hard for you to back up and let them be proven. Did they really believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Or did they only believe because you believed and you took them to church? Now there comes a time of their testing and we're going to find out whether they really believed because the testing will come. Now look at verse 14. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who when they have heard go out and are choked, notice this, with cares, riches, and pleasures of life. Everybody say cares. Care. Riches, riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity and bring no fruit to maturity. The Bible says in the last days there will be men and women that will be lovers of pleasure. I don't believe that God is against pleasure. But how many of you know you can make pleasure a God. I even uh, talk to my daughters now, and they, every one of them, I think, is close to, they're in their 40s or pushing 40s. I say, you know, it's wonderful that you're g giving your kids all of this, and it's birthdays every week, it seems like, or something that you're constantly giving. I said, but you know, we got to watch out. How many of you know we've got to teach them to work? Oh. I heard one amen. T say, teach, teach. My, kids my kids to work. Sure. Life is not just some pleasure adventure. And I think the biggest gift that my father and mother gave me was they taught me how to work. Teach your kids how to work. That means you give them responsibilities around the house. Clean up their own room. Clean up the bathroom. Got to remember, if you're raising up girls, if they keep a sloppy house, a sloppy room, they're going to they're going to they're going to keep a sloppy house. How many love me? Don't don't fuss at your wife. Fuss at mom and dad. So teach them how to work, and that life is more than pleasure, seekers of pleasure more than seekers of God. What are the three things that will actually uh, cause these people not to bear fruits to maturity? Cares and riches and pleasures. Look at verse 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with, what's that word? Patience. Ooh, patience. Patience. Listen, uh, how many's got patience in here? Okay. How many want patience? Okay, how many know how to get patience? 
Lord, I don't know if I want any more preachers or not. Turn to John 1.12, if you will. Let's read this one. This is a good one. That as many as received him, and who is him? Jesus. To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who what? Believe in his name. Isn't that powerful? To believe in the name of Jesus Christ. To believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Very, very powerful. Let's turn over, if you will, to John 4. Just trying to establish some things with scriptures here. John 4, 39. This is uh, the Samaritans. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him. Say, believed in him. Believed in him. Hold your place there and turn to uh, James 2, if you will. Let me clear this one up. Everybody turn to James. Hold your spot there. That's Hebrews, James, James 2, verse 19. Now, James is talking about people that said, well, I have, I have faith. But they didn't have any works with their faith. And so he's getting after these people. He said, listen to me. He said, I'm going to show you something. I want to show you my faith by my what? Works. Let me say that again. I want to show you my faith by my works. Now, we don't have to show God uh, so much because he knows our heart. He knows whether we have faith or not. But biblical faith always, listen to this, always produces works. When you really believe, it will produce works. Okay, that works will always follow biblical faith. And now here's what he's saying. He said, now listen, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Now what he's really saying here how many of you know that the devils don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? They believe there is one God. Hello? Amen. I mean, you need to get that clear. Look at what James says. You believe that there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe there is one God. But how many of you know there's a difference in believing there is one God and believing in that God or believing in Him, that in Him there is salvation? Do you see that? There, so you don't see that. Who don't see it? This is very important. I want you... Tim, you don't get this? Julia was talking. Oh, what? Oh, oh, take names in there. Where's Nick at? Take names back there. I, I, I sense a... I said that. I, I sense a... I like... This ain't penetrating. You know? All right. What did, what did James says? You believe? Well... You believe there is one God? Well, wow, good, fine. Remember, the demons, the demons, not the devil, the demons believe there is one God. That's totally different here. What we're talking about, believe and say, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, everybody say, believe, believe. in the Lord Jesus Christ. Demons don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they believe that there is one God. Okay? We understand that. That's very important. Because I, 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 we probably have said it before. You know, we, we talk about what someone says, well, I believe, and somebody stands up, yeah, the devil believes, and he trembles. How many has ever said that? Huh? I have. <laughs> yeah, the devil believes, and he, yeah, no, he just believes there is one God. He doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe in the one sacrifice that was given once and for all, that we might be cleansed of our sins of the past, the present, and the future. He doesn't believe in that, but he believes there is one God. Okay, let's go back to John. Everybody there? 4, 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him, underline it, believed in him, because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. In fact, let's read a little bit more on that. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed. 
because of his own word. Verse 42, then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is in indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. See, I, I believe, believe in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, that is so important because all through the scriptures, believing is so important. And I want to statuate that in these messages that I'll be preaching. In fact, let's turn. Let's turn to John 6, if you will, 47. I love this one. John 6, 47. Because the enemy is going to challenge you, and you need to know who you believe in. Look at verse 47, chapter 6. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, say in me, in me. has everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a promise. God has made it so simple. So simple. To believe. And what did I say belief was? Hmm? You forgot already, didn't you? You didn't write it down. Somebody tell me what I said belief. We believe in something that is true. Very simple. You just believe something is true. You got that? Belief means something is true. You believe it is true. You believe that you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall have everlasting life. So we put our belief in truth. Very important to understand that. In fact, let me read that again. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes, say, in me, has everlasting life. Does demons believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? No. But they believe what? They believe there is one God. but they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore they cannot be saved. So we see the power of belief. Now, once you begin to believe, listen to this, once you begin to believe, then your life begins to change. Because what you believe in is going to change how you're going to conduct yourself and how you're going to live your life. Okay? Very simple. It is not complicated. Turn, if you will, now to John 6, 60. Everybody there? John 6, starting with verse 60. Many disciples turned away. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Say the flesh profits nothing. Okay. But the Spirit gives life. I speak to you at, I speak to you are, what, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Now listen, here Jesus has all these disciples. Can you see all these disciples? I got a bunch of disciples. He says, let me tell you something, folks. Unless you drink of my blood and eat my flesh, you can have no part of me. How many of you know he lost all of them but the what? The disciples, the, the, the disciples that he picked, the twelve. The original twelve. There are some hard sayings in this book. And those hard sayings, listen to this, listen to this, this, those hard sayings is to flush out some shafts. It'll flush them out. Sometimes I think God makes it hard for us to follow him. But I've, listen to this, but I've lived long enough to know that that's how God 
puts fiber in our being and we come to a place, God, though you slew me, I yet shall praise your name. Amen. This is how God makes men and women of faith because when you plow through the hard times and you finally get to the other side, brother, you know whom you have believed in. You know who your Redeemer is. You know that you that no devil is going to snip you out of the hand of God because you've been proven and tested by everything that come against your life and you still stand and you wave the banner of life. You still cold? Or is that just goosebumps you rubbing? Goosebumps, okay, I'll allow you to do that, right? yeah. But listen, I, I want you to see something that is important because, because I guarantee you about every one of us have been in places of hard times and there, there have been times we felt like thrown in the towel. Come on, be honest. I mean, I tell you, there's times I felt like thrown in the towel. Can you ever see that the towel? You throw the towel out and the thing comes back and hits you in the face again. God says, no, Bob, I'm not going to turn you loose. I'm going to make a man of God out of you. I'm going to, I'm going to make you to believe everything can be dark. The mountains can move. The earth can spread in half. And you stand there and say, I'm going to That's how God puts stacks in our backbone. Right. And the wind can blow. And how the mountains can split. And we stand there with the wind blowing out. Blowing in your head. And say, He is Lord. Now listen, I just want to share my heart because my desire is to, people, to see people established in God. Amen. I'm not here to impress you or to depress you or impress you. I'm here to make disciples of you and to help you in your time when the darkness does come, you're going to stand in the midst of that storm. Now I know what Jesus felt when those disciples left him. I th he felt abandonment. How many of you in here had disciples and they, and they abandoned you? Come on, raise your hands. You poured out your life. Yeah, look at the hands. Poured your life into them. So I always have kids, husbands, you know. Are you going to leave too? He said to the other disciples, are you going to leave too? And what did his disciples say? Somebody tell me. You remember? You have eternal life. Where can we go? Nowhere, really. He's the one that has eternal life. And let me say something to folks in here. If you're halfway serving the Lord and you don't really believe and you just want to just serve the world, I want you to know I love you and God loves you. The chances are you're going to fall away. You know why I can say that? Because a double-minded man will receive nothing of the Lord. You don't have to serve God. No, you can go on out there and you can be lost and you can go to hell. God doesn't want that. I don't want that. But I tell you what, if that's what you want, God will give it to you and I'll give it to you. I'm not being harsh, but I, I know this. you gotta, you got to make your mind up. God is God and I'm going to follow him. Amen. Wherever he leadeth, I will follow. Amen. Now, folks, we're in the last days and I'm telling you, I can tell you some stories of people that I poured my life into hours upon hours of disciplining, hours upon hours of praying with them, hours of hours of instructing them in the Lord. And they still fall away. And God says, read the parable of the seed of the sowing of the word and you'll understand why. There's no root in them. They love the world more than they love God and God puts them to the test 
and tempt them and say, let me see if they're going to go out to the things of the world. Let me just see. I'm going to test it for their own good because they're going to be no good to themselves or to me until they come to that place and say, God, the temptations are all around, but I choose. As far as me and my house goes, we choose to serve the Lord. Now, Bob, this is where you add your churches. No, this is how God thins out. <laughs> how many of you know you only, he only had 12? If I, if I could just keep 12 of you with me, <laughs> that ain't too bad. But I believe you're not going nowhere because you read the book. How many of you know we read the end of the book and we win? Amen. Amen? Some of us have been tested. And I know sometimes you think that you might have failed in your test. But I'm here to tell you, you haven't failed. If you had failed, you wouldn't be here. Amen? No, you're here because you didn't fail. You're here. Amen? You're here. You're here. You're serving God because in all of the temptations and the trials and everything, and all the times you might have failed, and yet you reached out to God, God's promises and said, God, don't leave me. Don't forsake me. I believe, God. I believe. Strengthen me. Help me in my unbelief. Yes. Yes. How many times we've cried out in that anger like the man. He believed. He said, yes, I believe. But help me in my unbelief. What is belief? Glad I wrote it down. Wrote it down. I'm glad I've written it down. <clears throat> to take is true. Say to take. That's true. That's belief. We ought to be able to remember that. To take is true. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. Okay? Now, in the midst of your believing, there's times you're not going to see things and it's all going to look dark. But I still believe yeah. in the midst of the darkness that God is there. Yeah. You remember when the disciples went out and they were in the boat, Jesus was in the boat, and Jesus was asleep in the boat, and this big storm came up. How many of you have been in storms in here? Let me see. Yeah, yeah everybody. Talking to the right crowd. Hurricanes. Hugo. <laughs> I was in this building during Hugo. I know what it is to ride the storms of life out. And sometimes I look for Jesus in the storm. God, I know you're in the boat because I hear you snoring. Don't you care that I perish? Floyd, wake the master up. I'm scared. He might rebuke me. So Floyd goes back and says, Master, don't you care if we perish? And he says, You <laughs> of big faith. <laughs> in essence, paraphrasing it, in, uh, in that story, he rebuked them because of their lack, uh, because of their belief, right? No, he rebuked them because of their lack of belief and faith. He said, peace, be still. He spoke to the storm, and it settled down. Well, how many of you know that was putting in there for us? Because we've all experienced that in some degrees. When the wind was blowing, I literally experienced it in our boat uh, adventure when the boat turned over with my children in it and grandchildren. But you know, in all of that, my faith is strengthened. I believe, regardless of what, God is in control of my life. And I believe that at the end, the victory is mine. Amen? And that's what we believe. And that will help you, see, to walk through the temptations of life. Let's turn to John, if you will, 737. John 7, just right down the road there. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out. I like that. He cried out. Sometimes when I get a little noisy, just remember Jesus cried out too. Saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. 
He who believes in what? In me. In me. As the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him, remember, underline that believing in him would receive the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so let me say this, as we believe, believing brings a lot of benefits to us. There's a lot of blessings of God that will come our way because we believe. And this is very, very important. I want to share this little exercise with you because, because I'm practicing perhaps more in my life this particular principle. But any time, every time I come over to this building, the first thing I do is I say, God, if I have any attitudes, any thought this week, any emotional area that I'm bent out of shape on, any sin of the flesh, any sin of the mind, attitude, words, action, reaction, Lord, I receive it right now, or oh, now catch it, and I believe I am clean. Amen. That I can be a vessel fit for the master's use when I stand before the people. Now, I could have said all of that and didn't believe it, and it would have done me no good. Hello, church, are you out there? See, I believe that it was true. I believe that when I said that prayer and I confessed before God, I believe that he cleansed me from all unrighteousness and I am clean. Now, how many people, and, and I'm going to say this because I want to milk this a little bit. You ever seen anybody milk a cow? You seen people milk cows? Get Nick back there. Have fun milking cows. Believing that it is true. Believing means that it is true. Well, I'm milking this. So, if you've met God's condition and if you've confessed your sins, you've got to believe that you are clean, justified, sanctified, just as if you have never sinned. Folks, catch it. Do you believe that God loves you? Do you believe it's true? It's true. God loves me. I'm a child of God. I believe. When I die, I'm going to heaven. I believe. All my sins are on the ground of Jesus. I believe. I believe. Let's move it some more. See, when you start believing the word of the living God, that is true. When you believe it, it will set you free. My God, he was a witness of the It ain't this. He's believing the truth. Because you believe it is true. And folks, you will act different, you will think different, and you will even smell different. Now, most of you haven't had any problems with this, I understand. But in my early Christian life, I couldn't even believe God could love me. But strike the bat. We don't need no more bats. That's right. <laughs> How many of you know goats bats? But sheep say, ah, 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 
Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and out of your house. Now I want to preach my message. <laughs> Turn to John 8.24. John 8.24. Hallelujah. I know it's in my Bible. There it is right there. Mark it with my red pencil. All right, I hope you got your Bibles open to this one. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Unbelief. But if you believe that I am Him, you have eternal life. You have eternal life. John 9.35. We'll be closing here just shortly. Listen to what Jesus said. Let's start with verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the, in the Son of God? Of course, this is the man that was healed. And the Pharisees and the scribes and all of them just, you know, kicked him out. This was the man that couldn't see, but now he, Jesus healed him. Notice the question that Jesus asked him. Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, that Lord, that I may believe in him? Notice that, believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. And then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the, this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say you see, therefore your sin remains. Hold fast to what you believe. What you believe in. For the Bible says your reward will be great. We believe in in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We believe that no man can go to the Father except through Christ. We believe that by Christ we have forgiveness of sins and we have eternal life. Now I want to share one other scripture that's, that's very powerful and you need to underline it in your Bible because it really is a rebuke to those that refuse to believe and it's found in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Start with verse 5. Chapter 2, verse 5 through 12. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time, that is, the lawless one. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work only. He who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his, uh, his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Notice this. Because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie 
that all that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness in Deuteronomy God puts it this way he says I put before you life and death he says choose life choose prosperity choose truth folks it's very important that we believe truth in Hebrews chapter 1 I think it's verse 9 Jesus hated wickedness and loved righteousness and you say well Bob I'm just not there yet let me help you out in your daily confession you need to say God I hate sin I hate unrighteousness I love your truths if you understand in Thessalonians there are those that once they have once they have the, the truth has been presented to them they choose not to believe the truth and therefore God gave them up to believe a lie because how many of you know you're going to believe something and it's the Word of God that we must believe in get into the Word of God find the truth and believe it simple it's not complicated believing simply means you believe that it is true I believe that the word is true this is the beginning because as you believe notice this as you believe for this is what I love about it as you believe the Holy Spirit begins to work and begins to make it alive to you and it becomes life and it changes your whole life how many of you know as Christians we cannot be lazy how many in here is lazy don't raise your hand I don't want to see it one little girl raised her hand back there one little boy over here well we're all lazy at times but don't be lazy you know I encourage you to get into the Word of God we have scripture sheets back there and believing is believing that it is true see believing is simply believing that it is true now it gets back to what Paul said he said it's the law help me out here it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has set me free from the law of sin and death isn't that awesome so many times we're crying out to be set free from things not knowing that if we believe the truth Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free isn't that awesome you know we, we strain we, we fight the devil we fight the flesh and yet if we simply believe what the Bible says about the world the flesh and the devil the Holy Spirit is released his power is released to make it real to us he revealed how many of you know eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them but what he but what he has revealed it unto us how by his spirit and when we choose to believe God's word that releases the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth of that word and that word becomes reality to us and, the, and, and that word liberates us and sets us free and the things that so bind us disappear by us believing the truth and we're liberated and it's all unseen it's all unseen isn't that amazing Let me, I'll, I'll say this uh, God loves you how many heard me I'm not going to ask how many really believe it some of you and probably must have we believe it to a degree but listen to this the degree that you believe it woo -woo, catch it will the degree of the reality of that love and that uh, and that uh, experience of that love that will rip your heart and woo, you're set free 
many understand? Raise your hand if you understand just a little bit. Okay. Oh, let me bring you down a little bit. I want you to get this. We'll pick on these two. Okay. Flight. Daughter. Does your wife love you? Yes, sir. Okay. Isn't that wonderful? You believe that? Yes, sir. But suppose you believe that she didn't love you, how would you feel? <laughs> Bad. It would totally, absolutely change your life and your relationship with her. Hello, church, are you out there? But he believes it, she believes it, and therefore that relationship is solid, and they get the vibrations of it. Look at it. See, he's getting vibrations already. And see, when you really believe that God loves you, that's right. You will come over and sit in his life and say, I'm a father. I'm a father. I love you and you love me. And there's no doubt. Because how many of you know there's so many people that, have, that are really rooted and grounded in rejection? Amen. Now, when you come to that place of, hey, listen, listen, he really loves you. He really loves you. Let's get this back with the natural. I'm going to quit looking this thing, but this is so powerful if you can grab it. These two over here, picking on you. You love one another. Yes. But suppose you found out she didn't love you. That would bind you. That would make him miserable. His action and reaction towards her would be totally different. But being that he knows she loves him, whoo, he responds to her. Well, you can see the effect. <laughs> out of love, out of love, out of love, a child is coming forth. Amen. See, the reason that people are still struggling with God, they don't really believe that he knows you. You don't really believe he loves you. You listen to the devil. The devil's lies too long. But when you believe that he loves you, man. See, we're creatures of love. We got to know that we are loved by God. And we have to have people to love us. That supports us. That is our supporting system. And when we know that God loves us, there's nothing, there's nothing in the world we can conquer. Because we know, we believe, we believe that He loves us. Check, listen to this, this week, check your belief system this week. Check it. Do you believe that you're a child of God? Do, be, do you believe that you're more than a conqueror? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you? Do you believe that when you die, you're going to heaven? Do, what do you believe? You go through the scriptures and study it. It's awesome. And I'll be bringing more of it out about belief. The power of belief will change your total life. Things that you have struggled with for years, the power of those things will be totally destroyed because you believe greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And brother, when you believe that, you'll go forth in power, in strength. Only believe. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we look back in our lives and see the things and the areas that we've struggled with. A lot of times, Lord, it was just because of unbelief. We didn't really believe that you cared. We didn't really believe that you was for us. We didn't really believe that we were made righteous by the one act of Jesus Christ. God, help us to check our belief system this week. To get the scripture sheets back there and go over them and see the things that we should believe. 
Father, help us in our unbelief. We thank you, Father, for your word that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he is the Savior of the world. We believe that he is the Son of God. We believe in him and we believe in his name. And we thank you for the power of belief. Wake us up this week to your truths as we believe what you have said. That releases the Holy Spirit to make it a reality in our lives. We thank you, Father God, that there is a whole new arena waiting for every one of us, including myself, as we come into that understanding of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and what it means and the many promises that are opened up to us as we believe and have believed in his name. And Father, if there's anyone here today that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray that they will come forward. And remember that scripture, as many as receive Christ, God gives them the authority to become children of God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, there may be those here that need prayer. I pray, God, that you would strengthen them and encourage them. And may they believe that you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.